Hello students, in this video we'll discuss properties of the Fourier coefficients of a function. Let's consider a 2 pi periodic function f defined on negative pi to pi with the technical condition that we need is 1 over 2 pi, the integral from negative pi to pi. We need integrability condition that f of theta, I would like the function to satisfy this problem over here so I can actually make sense of what the Fourier coefficients are. For these functions, we can define, and of course, we, we want to think of the f just as a continuous function or a Raymond integrable function, but the technical condition we need is Le Lebesgue integrability of this function, but we'll learn about that in a future video and come back and say that this most makes this space, this L1 space, complete. All right, so I, need, can, I would like functions that are integrable, basically, on this space, and we define, of course, define, define f hat of n, where n is in z, to be 1 over 2 pi, the integral from negative pi to pi, of f of theta, e to negative i n theta, d theta. This is the nth Fourier coefficient of the function f, the nth Fourier coefficient. Okay. Of course, where does this come from? This comes from the idea that we know that this basis over here, this collection of functions e to the i n theta, where n is in z, is an orthonormal set with respect to this inner product, f g is 1 over 2 pi, the integral from negative pi to pi, f of theta g of theta bar d theta, okay? Excellent. Of course, we're assuming these functions are complex value. They could be real value as well, which case we don't need the complex conjugate, okay? And so, of course, that gives us a formal Fourier series and that these are the coefficients of that formal Fourier series. We like to figure out when that Fourier series is actually convergent. So to do that, what we're going to do is let's talk about some properties of Fourier coefficients. So two trivial properties, properties, one, is that these Fourier coefficients are linear, right? So in other words, if I, have, if I have alpha f plus g, and I find the nth coefficient of this linear combination, this is just going to become alpha f hat of n plus g hat of n, and that just follows from the linearity of the integral over here. So if I put a linear combination, alpha f plus g into this integral, I can just split it up by the linearity of the integral, right? This is just the linearity of the integral. Proof is just the linearity of the integral. Okay. Two is another trivial inequality that says the absolute largest that these Fourier coefficients can be is what? Well, it's going to be the absolute largest of this integral over here. So it's going to be 1 over 2 pi, the integral from negative pi to pi of f of theta d theta. And of course, this is going to be the L1 norm of this function over here. We know this is less than infinity, right? And so this is less than equal to, say this is less than equal to the L1 norm of this function with respect to this weighted measure over here, d theta over 2 pi. So in other words, the L1 norm of this function controls the size of these Fourier coefficients. So these Fourier coefficients is a bounded sequence. So the sequence over here, f hat of n for n and z is bounded. Okay? Another trivial, that's just from the triangle equality. The third property we want to talk about is how it acts under conjugation. So the third property of these things over here is if I look at f bar hat, the complex conjugate of f of n, What's that going to be? Let's write it out. This is going to be 1 over 2 pi, the integral from negative pi to pi of f bar of theta, e to the negative i n theta d theta. I can pull that bar out of everything because this is really, because e to the negative i n theta is really the bar of e to the i n theta. So this is going to be 1 over 2 pi, the integral from negative pi to pi of f of theta, e to the i n theta d theta, the bar of this whole thing. So this is going to be f hat of negative n. This is going to be a negative n complex conjugate. So that's how the how the Fourier transform works with, with these bars over here. So that's just, just a negative n over there. Great. So that's that conjugation. Let's do conjugation. We have linearity. Now let's do differentiation, right? So what will the differentiation property be? Okay. Cool. So if I look at f prime hat of n, what's that going to be? The derivative. How does it work with derivatives? It's going to be 1 over 2 pi, the integral from negative pi to pi of f prime of theta e the negative i n theta d theta, okay? I'm going to integrate my parse, is going to be my dv. This is going to be my u. So it's going to be v times u. So it's going to be 1 over 2 pi, 
V times U, that's going to be an F of theta, E to the negative I and theta from negative pi to pi. Okay, minus the integral of u dv, right? So minus integral from negative pi to pi of u dv. So the dv is going to be f of theta. The du is going to be negative i and theta. So I'm going to have a plus and then an i times n d theta. By the periodicity, those terms are gone. Those are gone by periodicity because f of, theta, f of pi and then f of negative pi are the same. And, and e to the negative i and pi and e to the negative i and negative pi are the same numbers over there. So that gives you just identity. That gives you zero. And so this, of course, is just i n. So in other words, what we've just shown over here, we've just shown that f prime hat of n is just i times n f hat of n. Okay? So that's a very important relationship because I can iterate this relationship for any derivative I want. Then the last property which is going to play a fundamental role in our analysis is this property. This is the convolution property. So property is that if f convolution g of theta is defined to be 1 over 2 pi, the integral from negative pi to pi of f of phi g of theta minus phi d phi, then what's the coefficient of this convolution product over here? Then f convolution, if I look at f convolution g hat of n, what this will be is this is going to be f hat of n and then g hat of n times g hat of n, so it's a product structure. And of course, the proof of that fact, and this is a very important fact, that's the convolution property, we're going to use this a lot in further videos, is the fact that what happens over here is the fact that how can I prove something like this? Well, I'm really going to do what? I'm really going to do a 1 over 2 pi, the integral from negative pi to pi, of f convolution g of theta, so f convolution g of theta, e to the negative i n theta. So I'm going to write that e to the negative i n theta, as negative theta, and then I'm going to do a minus phi and then a plus phi over here, right? d theta, okay? And so now, of course, the g of theta minus phi can get paired with this term over here when I do Fubini's theorem, and then the f of phi will be paired with this e to the negative i and phi. So by writing e to the negative i and theta, like in this form, I see the term that comes from the g of i and theta and the term that comes from the f of theta. So we see that this result exactly follows from this definition over here. So of course, the convolution gives me a second inter integral. So I have two integrals over here, and I'll choose Fubini's theorem to split them apart. So as an exercise for you all, write down the definition of this, use Fubini's theorem and this identity for f for e to the negative i n theta, and then see that this product structure is true. So the, the Foucault coefficient of the convolution of two functions is the product of the Foucault coefficient of the two functions they are convolving. Thank you very much.